You want to watch the recap video? Yes, let's watch the recap for those of you who haven't seen it. Advances in biotechnology were helping people improve their physical and mental abilities to an amazing degree. Provided, of course, they had enough money. A new breed of people was a <laughs> God damn it, that's just funny looking. Machine. And in Detroit, at least, not everyone was happy to I guess see we it. don't care about performance enhancing in, I just in sports a anymore. I just security at Seraph Industries, a cutting-edge biotech firm. David Seraph himself handpicked me for the job. Said he needed me to keep his people safe. My ex, Megan Reed, was one of them. A brilliant neuroscientist. Megan had found a way to make You guys do that, I'm gonna set the screen to make it just forever. right. All she had to do was present her research to Congress. But the night before her big meeting, my security measures Don't mind me fucking with the screen. A team of it will behave eventually. Massacring everyone in sight. Three of the mercs were heavily augmented walking tanks. Oh my gosh, this does not want to fit the screen. Take out Megan and her team. I tried to stop them, but their leader tossed me through a plate glass wall. Last thing I heard as his bullets. We're gonna make it work, damn it. Was Megan's dying scream. I should have died with her. Only I Come on. Come on. High end military grade enhancements saved my life. The best augmentation Sarah's money could buy. It took me half a year to get a feel for her. Should have taken longer. But six months into my recovery, Sarah Industries was attacked again. This time by a radical group of pro human purists. Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Sorry, that was the immediate thought I had there. They claim to be members of Humanity Front. Non-profit organization that wanted the UN. It's not about the technology, Ma, it's about the cheddar. You don't get that good shit unless you got the cheddar. And found machinists working overtime on a top secret military augment called the Typhoon. Sarif sent me to retrieve it. And when I did, I found one of the so-called purists next to it, wired with cerebral implants, trying to download its classified specs. Obviously, something more was going on. Yogg killed himself before I could question him. So are we good Sarif on volume leveling? My voice versus him. game audio? So with the help of Frank Pritchard, Sarif said of cybersecurity, I did. Turns out a second hacker had been controlling Yogg's actions from somewhere off-site. Pritchard and I tracked his signal to a secret FEMA internment camp in Detroit. The Black Op mercenaries were there. The same mercs who'd left me for dead six months before. I figured they'd try again when they saw me. It wasn't so easy for them this time. I took out the tank named Barrett. Even got him to give me a new lead. A penthouse apartment in China. Of course, we both knew it would be a trap in the end. Okay, good deal. Hengsha Island, China. Home to a city so And <laughs> That would be... Quite the investment. Trying to find clues in Hengshou wouldn't be easy. <laughs> God, that would be bad. <laughs> no, this game has pretty good voice acting, so no. Seraph Industries' ace pilot had lived in Hengshou before. A good person to have on your side. She knew enough about the place to get me around. Malik dropped me in the lower city, close to the penthouse Barrett had told me about. Bell Tower Associates, a private security firm under contract to the Chinese government, had agents tossing the suite when I arrived. Just not for the reason I've been expecting. Ah oh, man, watching this is making me nostalgic. This game was so fun. The same hacker who'd been remotely controlling the AUG in Sarah's factory. Van Bruggen's panicked decision to force the man to commit suicide had been a mistake. Now his mercenary partners were gunning for him, and I needed to find him before they did. Locating Van Bruggen meant playing nice with the triads, anxious organized crime lords. They had the hacker holed up inside a low-rent capsule hotel. By the time I found him, Van Bruggen had no qualms giving up the woman who hired him. Zhao Yunru, president of the Taiyang Medical Corporation. According to Van Bruggen, Zhao wanted to monopolize the augmentation industry and had hired black op mercenaries to destabilize her competition. Seraph Industries was at the top of her list. To prove this, I needed to get inside TYM 
and grab a surveillance hologram off a server. I suspected Van Bruggen was hiding something when he told me this, but nothing could have prepared me for what I saw. Megan wasn't dead. She and her four best researchers had been kidnapped, spirited away somewhere while their kidnappers made it look like they were dead. Desperate to learn more, I confronted Zhao in her penthouse. She claimed to be a pawn in a bigger plan, and hinted at a group so powerful it controlled global interests at a whim. Then she slipped into a panic room and hit the alarm, forcing me to make a very quick exit. I figured Zhao was lying, but part of her confession made sense. David Seraph had been worried about his people. So worried, he'd required all of them to have subdermal locator devices surgically implanted. The GPLs would have been broadcasting the day of the attack. But Zhao sent a single call to Picus, the world's leader in global 24-hour satellite news, and turned those signals off. I needed to fly to Picus headquarters in Montreal if I wanted to learn more. Eliza Kassan. Okay, game. Pikus Communications First Lady of News. I I'd like to play now. Malik thought it was reaching when I told her Eliza was involved in this. The world's most famous news anchor. I suppose to be fair, I did ask for this. Squad. But when I confronted Kassan in her office, she freely admitted to jamming Detroit satellites the night Megan's team had been taken. Since she's just been following her commands, I suspected she wanted to say more. But Black Op mercenaries showed up looking to shut us both down. And just like that, the Eliza Yeah, this is pretty much just for people who haven't seen or played Deus Ex 1 or what do you call it, Human Revolution. God, that freaking armor looks ridiculous. It's like like shit you'd see in a Lady Gaga music video. A deadly fight ensued. I made sure she never silently again god damn that's, down, a, no one left that's a nice quiet. euphemism for killing the shit out of somebody turns out Picus's first lady of news wasn't a lady at all she was a sophisticated AI program engineered to monitor data structure a sophisticated tranny AI is what I just heard Eliza told me the mercs had brought in a humanity front doctor named Isaiah Sandoval Remove the scientist's implanted tracking devices while Detroit's satellites were down. She also told me to speak to David Sarah if I wanted to learn more. By the time Malik and I got back to Detroit, tensions between normal and augmented citizens had reached a flashpoint. Riots were breaking out in several cities, and the UN was being urged to intervene. Seraph was trying hard to convince Hugh Darrow, the inventor turned philanthropist, who'd once been a leading proponent of enhancement technologies, to help stop a possible regulatory vote. Seraph had a lot I, I would down. settle just to do something. Megan's discovery Lance. millions of people a chance to evolve beyond their normal human abilities. Basically, a bunch of corrupt time, motherfuckers Sarah are making robot shit and sticking on people's bodies. According to Seraph, Megan's kidnappers knew this didn't want people evolving unless they controlled how it was done. He called his enemies Illuminati and urged me to keep searching. Determined to do so, I tracked down Sandoval via America's most outspoken augmentation opponent, Bill Taggart, Sandoval's boss and founder of Humanity Front. Sandoval admitted to operating on Megan's team when I confronted him, but said he hadn't removed their GPLs. He merely switched them to a different frequency. Pritchard was able to trace one of the signals to China. Malik and I immediately took off in pursuit. Unfortunately, the Illuminati were one step ahead. Damn you, Illuminati! And, and your illuminated point of view. Shot the sky by Bell Tower Associates seconds after entering anxious airspace. Malik's piloting skills saved me. After a tense and bitter struggle, I escaped into Lower Hengsha. The tracking signal I was following led straight to the triads, or more specifically, to the augmented arm of Tong Si Hung, leader of a gang of augmentation harvesters. Tong said they'd taken the arm off a corpse, which Bell Tower had left at their door. Any moment now. And we 
least one of Seraph's scientists was dead. Maybe not the rest of them, though. Tong pointed me to a port used for human trafficking and helped me slip aboard a bell tower ship. We were sailing to Rifleman Bank Station, a military base in the South China Sea. Bell Tower was holding kidnapped civilians as prisoners there, and using them to perfect the Hyron Project, a human-computer interface that left most of its test subjects dead. My search for Megan would have ended then, if not for a mysterious ally named Quinn. In exchange for my help exposing Bell Tower, we're currently waiting for this shit to start. <laughs> and an Illuminati-run biotech facility called Omega Ranch. Three of Seraph scientists were there, forced by their captain. Okay, let's take a vote. Who wants me to say fuck this and just stop the recap and get into the game? Thanks to an emergency recall notice issued by the World Health Organization, millions of people all over the world already had the biochip installed. With the help of the scientists, I tracked Megan to a private section of the ranch. There, I ran into Yaron Namir, the walking tank who'd put a bullet in my brain the first time we met. He'd teamed up with Zhao and was hoping to catch me off guard. Their little ambush didn't work. I found Megan in a suite belonging to Hugh Darrow, the billionaire philanthropist who Seraph had called on for help. Three universes where there are more than one species of group of sentient beings where they aren't all opposed to each other just for the being a basically racism reference. Um, let's see. Star Wars, Jedi and the Sith, well, granted they're all comprised of different races throughout them, but they disagree with each other on a philosophical level and really aren't used as an allegory for that. Um, I guess you could say Star Trek. It was up to me to set things right. To do it, I had to reach Panchea, a massive installation in the Arctic Ocean. Okay, I got two of three universes the where they're not for that. Um, workforce. I saw death and destruction. Mario? <laughs> By the time I shut down Darrow's broadcast, I knew the damage he'd done. Still, Mario jumps on all bitches equally. Unclear. How would the world react to this sabotage? Would people ever regain their faith in augmentations again? What would be the Illuminati's next move? Only time to give us the answers. Ow! Fucking hurt!